So I'm going to talk about Faraday and Lenz's law, and chances are you've seen this demonstration. If I just drop a ball bearing through this copper tube, then it falls down rather rapidly. But if I drop a super magnet through this tube, well, something strange happens. And it's not because there's a friction between the uh, outside of the magnet and the tube. It is freely falling through there, and it's falling at a terminal velocity, which we know when that's happening, there's a force balancing its weight. And that force opposes the motion of the magnet, and that is due to Faraday and Lenz's law. So Faraday's law says that when a conductor moves relative to a magnetic field, it produces a current or induces a EMF. And that EMF then causes a current. And he said that the EMF produced is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. So you've got to imagine this conductor moving through that flux, either way relative to that flux, and if the, the faster it moves relative to the flux, the greater the EMF produced. Um, Lenz's law just states that the EMF is opposite to that change in flux which produced it. So Lenz's law is just the minus. So all in one equation, Faraday and Lenz's law is the EMF produced is equal to minus dn phi over dt. EMF is minus the change in flux linkage over the chain in time. This is Faraday's law. And Lenz added it's opposite to, the EMF is opposite to the rate of change of flux linkage. So I was looking for an interesting way to demonstrate this interesting context as well to show my students. It turns out that trains actually have electromagnetic speed sensors, okay? And they work just by having a coil of wire on the track and a magnet on the train. And as the coil of wire moves past the magnet, or as the magnet moves past the coil of wire, we get an EMF induced. And I was looking at how I could actually measure that, and well, it turns out you need a bit of software, and you need a pico ammeter and a data logger for your ammeter. So I didn't, I didn't have that, but it, it just so happens that this bit of wire here is the most useful bit of wire I can imagine. This is just a two, um, two leads hooked up to a ordinary microphone or headphone jack, an ordinary stereo jack. And here I can actually just plug this across this, and I can use Audacity in the computer just to measure that change in EMF across these two uh, over time. So trains just have two of these equally spaced on the track, magnet on the train, and you can see when the, the train passes the first one, when the train passes the second one, you've got distance and time to fix distance apart, and therefore you've got the speed. So I thought that really worked pretty well. It's a pretty easy thing you can do. You probably do have one of these lying around somewhere in your physics department. And these are just the coils from a uh, transformer set for demonstrating transformers. What I really love about that is you just get that nice two peaks, one positive, one negative, as it moves through both sides of the magnetic field. And one side will be tall in the other if you're accelerating, and the second side will be small in the other if you are decelerating. And we know that because it's a graph essentially on audacity of voltage versus time, or EMF versus time, then we know the area underneath the curve will be the change in flux linkage, it would be dn phi. Um, and in fact, as we move the magnet across, that will be the same as it's going into the magnetic field and coming out of the magnetic field as well. then this area here would equal this area here. And both of them would equal the change in flux linkage. So I think this is absolutely fascinating. I've tried to do this with an oscilloscope, and you do, it does work, you do get that little blip, um, but you can't kind of save it very easily as this. You, the only downside to this is you can't really take accurate um, meter readings, voltmeter readings from your little graph that you've done there. But it works really well to demonstrate to your class just that shape of curve that you're, in, that you're interested in and um, the idea of, of going into and then coming out of the magnetic field 
being opposite EMFs. If you turn the magnet around, then you get the opposite shape of curve. You get positive first and then negative second.